You know, I think I think the biggest trauma out there is probably entitlement. Mm. And you'll notice it because most people have a response to what's wrong with them. Mm -hmm. The response being somebody else's doing or fault. I, you know, if they ask why they're not successful, why they're not farther advanced, mm -hmm. why they're not more, you know, anything, mm -hmm. you know, it's parenting, mm -hmm. it's partner, it's employer. Man, my job don't want to give me a raise. Man, my girl don't show love. Man, I never, I, I didn't have nothing growing up. Yeah, it's like any, it, like uh, as adults, like I got, I've never seen so many adults that automatically cast blame for deficits within mm -hmm. on uh, another human. You know what's so crazy? I've been thinking about this a lot, even um, in terms of myself. Like, But we all do it. We blame everything, a lot of things, on our childhood and our upbringing. Yeah. And it's like, actually, it's, when you said something earlier before we started the podcast, you said that you guys were watching it on Christmas and your mom saw it, right? And mm -hmm. I was thinking about like a specific clip that we had from part one where you were talking about how you grew up um, being the man of the house. Yes. And it kind of was a little bit, um, what's the word I want to use? Like you kind of were critiquing your mom's parenting in a way or it could sure. be looked at like that. Sure. What do, do you, like what does your mom say about that when she sees things like that? Because I'm sure you with all this content out here, right, as an yeah. author and stuff, like yeah. I'm sure she's had to uh, hear consume what you, it, yeah. yeah, which consume it, right, hear what you think of her. Like how is your relationship you know, I think early on, my mom realized that I was gifted. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, I think I think she wasn't really caught up in the momentum. Mm -hmm. But the first show she ever came to, it was a thousand people in the room. And my name was on the billboard outside. And that's when she kind of realized it. Mm -hmm. You know, she was like, wait a minute. Like, whatever my son is doing out here, I have no idea. She didn't get a Facebook until I stopped speaking to her for some time. We had went through a little something. And, you know, she just wanted to watch me. So I guess early on enough, she realized that, hey, you, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. Like, it's I'm just here. It's bigger. This is bigger than her. Okay. And, and, and also, like, she realized that even, like, not directly, she was not directly responsible mm -hmm. for it. Mm -hmm. I mean, now, deep down, Everything that she did for me is the reason why I'm the way who I am. Mm -hmm. So, you know, 90% of the credit goes to God. The other 10%, and I'm fighting for more, mm -hmm. definitely comes from my mom. Mm -hmm. Indirectly. Mm -hmm. Just her decision making, where she chose to, like, what she chose to feed me. Like, the, the, the reality that she put me in mm -hmm. is a direct reflection of who I am today. Mm -hmm. But me navigating this business... Me reaching certain heights, she understood that I kind of did that on my own, mm -hmm. and I we we always lived in a house like with that maturity, mm -hmm. with that I guess with that with that role, came maturity, and came the ability for me to speak my mind to my mom, as like a co-adult, mm -hmm. even though I probably was still in adolescence. Okay, but it's like I remember one time. When my mom put something in her eye, and I was 13 years old, it was 2 o'clock in the morning. The hospital was only four blocks away, but I had to get in the car and physically drive. So the first time my mom, like, my mom never took me to the park or a parking lot and drive. Like, now nah, I was like, nah, I got to take you to the hospital. It was five blocks away. I'm like, mom, don't trip. Let me just drive you to the hospital because, you you know. And then, you know, so I did a lot of my prove. I, I did a lot of proving my manhood in real time. But it wasn't like, like her raising me wasn't always just – do manly things. Mm -hmm. It's like have manly conversations with me. Mm. Let's let's develop a care plan for my little sister after school. Let's develop uh, a laundry and food shopping. You know, like I'm in there. I'm in save a lot making decisions on dinner on you know meal prepping or whatever. Yeah. Because I know my mom is working all day and then she's going to school at night yeah. to finish her degree. Uh, you know. She needs some sleep, so she's having me take my little sister to the market with me. Yeah. I'm in there with the shopping cart. I'm in Save a Lot putting meals together. Mm -hmm. So even even in my personal life, I, I see the influence. But as far as like just Mike the poet, mm -hmm. she understands that even though she won't take any credit for it, she understands that the man I am, which is that, 
is is from her, but she don't really give me no, like you know, she's right, not trying to be like, like a manager honest. or like a you know, she's like, hey, my, I just I just wants to be it. I just want to consume it. Oh, I love that. So the pros and cons to yeah. like our child, like I feel like this is something I want to work on moving into the new year in like therapy. Um, it's just like. I've, I've always said this and I understand this, but I want to actually like, um, mm, I don't know. Like we blame things on our childhood Yes. and I don't want whatever happened in my childhood is who built the person I am today. Right. Like it builds character. Like you're saying, right. The pros and cons of like, that's an actual really big pro being able to be someone who is like, creating content and putting like using their real life and putting it out to the world yeah. and to have your parents support in that way where it's like you don't even have to really hear about how they're uncomfortable with it mm -hmm. and maybe you don't even recognize that because your mom does not doesn't give you a hard time with it you know no. what i mean but like i've seen so many others and me myself have had an experience where i'm telling my truth but it's obviously has something to do with my parents and they don't like that you know what I'm saying? You know, a, a lot of parents is some shit that kids probably not gonna like, and, and it might be their narrative. I mean, I, um, you know, I think, I think adulthood taught me a lot. I think that was the last step, right? Like, I can only speak from this place because I'm 39 years old, mm. right? Mm -hmm. And now, like, it's sad to say, but. Now that I know moms mm -hmm. with kids and how they carry their kids, mm -hmm. I appreciate my mother more. Mm -hmm. Now that I see what moms are like and how often they leave their kids with random people for days, for weekends, for weeks, because they're chasing other worldly things when there are opportunities to be a parent. Now, in the beginning, I was mad that my mom cut my hair until I was 14. I was mad that she sent me to high school, public school, with pay less sneakers on. Mm -hmm. In real time, I was mad at all of that. Mm -hmm. But I did not understand. Mm -hmm. I did not understand what it's like to survive as an adult. Yeah. What it's like to survive in, as an adult post-domestic violence. Mm -hmm. To go through divorce, raise two kids, try to reintroduce yourself into the, wording, the, the workforce. Yeah. Right? Like, like my mother has so many dynamics in real time. Mm -hmm. But as an adolescent, I was so me-centered that I didn't, even under, I didn't even understand what this other human was going through. So I didn't really get like that introspection until later in life. Got you. Um, now, I guess success plays a part in it mm -hmm. because nobody owes you anything when you feel like you have everything that you need. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a lot of the people that owe me money back in the early 2000s, I forgot it mm -hmm. at this point. Yeah. But if I was down, like you know what I'm saying? Like if I had $60 to my name, and I think, I think subconsciously, emotionally, people have those sort of debts. But again, it's like a lack within, mm -hmm. it's easier to cast judgment. But that's not even the dangerous part. The dangerous part is waiting for the reparations from that mm -hmm. or just only leaving that part, leave, like letting the story stop there. Mm -hmm. It's like some people walk through most of their lives mm -hmm. and they base the, their lack of on parenting, on childhood trauma. Mm -hmm. If you're able to articulate to me that the reason why you struggle as an adult is because of tri childhood trauma. Mm -hmm. You already have your diagnosis. Yeah. You just did not seek the treatment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then it falls back in your court. But too many people, unfortunately, are, it's, I mean, because it's easier to not grow. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, but, but ultimately, I just want people to know that the challenge is on them. For sure. Because it's easier to grow. It's easier to place blame elsewhere. To to place It's easier to place blame and stay the same. The reason why I'm never going to love a man is because I never watched my mom love a man. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's only half the story. Yeah. And that's anybody's story. There's no victory in that story. 